Today I will show you a biography, comedy, drama film from 2011 Once Upon a Time in Paris. There lived a young man named Driss, who had grown tired of the monotony of his daily routine. He worked a dead-end job and lived in a small apartment with his large family. But one day, his life took an unexpected turn when he met Philippe, a wealthy quadriplegic who was in need of a new caretaker. Driss, initially, was not too excited about the idea of working as a caretaker, but he needed the money, so he decided to give it a try. He arrived at Philippe's luxurious mansion and was welcomed by Yvonne, the housekeeper who showed him around the place and gave him a brief on Philippe's daily routine. Driss was awestruck by the opulence of the mansion, but at the same time, he was intimidated by the thought of having to take care of someone who was completely dependent on him. Despite his initial reservations, Driss soon found himself warming up to Philippe and the two of them quickly formed a strong bond. Driss had never had a friend like Philippe before. Philippe was witty and intelligent, and he had a great sense of humor. He was also incredibly kind and patient, and Driss found himself looking forward to their daily conversations. As the days went by, Driss learned the ins and outs of taking care of Philippe. He had to learn how to keep Philippe's legs stimulated, how to put him in the wheelchair, and how to help him shower and change his clothes. It was a lot of work, but Driss was determined to do his best. One day, while they were out on a drive, Driss got pulled over by the police for breaking the speed limit. Driss, being the quick-thinking person he was, managed to outsmart the officers and convince them to escort them to the hospital. This incident brought Driss and Philippe even closer, and from that day on, they were more like brothers than employer and employee. As the one-month trial came to an end, Philippe offered Driss a permanent job as his caretaker, and Driss accepted without hesitation. He knew that his life would never be the same, but he was excited to see what the future held for him and his new friend. From that day on, Driss and Philippe went on many adventures together. They traveled the world, they went to concerts, and they even went skydiving. They had many laughs together and created memories that would last a lifetime. Years went by, and Driss and Philippe's friendship only grew stronger. They had become more like family than anything else. Driss had found a new purpose in life, and he was grateful for the opportunity that had been given to him. In the end, Driss and Philippe's friendship was an inspiration to many. They had shown that no matter what life throws at us, we can always find a way to overcome it with the help of a true friend. It was a typical morning for Yvonne, as she went to Driss' room to scold him for being late. But this day was different, as she stumbled upon something unexpected in his bag, dangerous weapons. She didn't comment on them yet, but it was something that weighed heavily on her mind. Driss' job for the day was to assist Philippe, a wealthy man who was confined to a wheelchair, by driving him around. But Driss refused to treat Philippe like cargo by placing him in the back of a van. Instead, he decided to take one of the fancy cars that didn't see much use. Initially, Philippe was resistant to the idea, thinking it was not suitable and they should be more pragmatic. However, as the day went on, he found himself getting excited at the prospect of a faster and less boring ride. Despite this, Yvonne still disapproved. As they attempted to leave the building, they were met with a roadblock, a neighbor had parked their car at the entrance, ignoring the sign that stated it was forbidden. Driss didn't waste any time and quickly confronted the individual, grabbing them by the front of their shirt and threatening them until they moved their car. Philippe was impressed by Driss' actions, but Yvonne, once again, disapproved. The pair went to a museum, where Philippe was planning on purchasing a piece of artwork. Driss, however, felt that the piece was not worth the money, as it was simply a red blotch on the canvas. After the museum, Philippe met with a relative who expressed their concern about Driss, citing his tendency towards violence and the fact that he had a criminal record. But Philippe didn't care, as he appreciated Driss for not pitying him and for not minding joking around with him. Later that evening, Driss had dinner with Yvonne in the kitchen and listened as Philippe dictated a letter to a woman named Magali. Yvonne, claiming it was a private conversation, turned off the baby monitor and proceeded to explain the situation to Driss. Philippe had been communicating with a woman named Eleanor through letters, but they had never met in person. As the night went on Driss and Yvonne continued to talk about various topics, including love. Driss even teased Yvonne about the way the gardener looked at her. But as Driss was trying to sleep, he heard strange noises coming from the baby monitor. It was Philippe, who was having trouble breathing. Despite his initial reluctance, Driss couldn't ignore him and went to his room soothing him with gentle words and a wet cloth to wipe his face. Eventually, Philippe fell asleep, only to wake up moments later, saying he needed air. This time Driss didn't hesitate and took him out for a stroll by the river. This was the first time Philippe had seen Paris at night in a long time, and he was more relaxed now. He explained to Driss that the medicine could only do so much and he sometimes experienced phantom pain. 
As they continued their walk, Philippe also confided in Driss that he wasn't capable of pleasuring a woman due to his condition, but that he still derived satisfaction from having his ears massaged. When the phantom pain threatened to appear again, Driss shared one of his joints with Philippe, who was initially skeptical but ultimately enjoyed it. They then went to a restaurant, where they joked and shared a meal. During this time, Philippe shared more of his story with Driss. He had met his wife when they were students and shortly after they got married, she had five miscarriages and was diagnosed with an incurable, terminal illness. As the days passed, the friendship between Philippe and Driss continued to grow stronger. Driss would take Philippe to play in the snow, bring him along on runs, and even buy him his first suit. Despite this, there were still moments of tension, such as when Driss burst into the room complaining about Elisa and insisting that Philippe needed to discipline her, which Yvonne agreed with. Philippe agreed to talk to her, but was surprised to learn that Driss had been painting. One day, Driss showed his first painting to Magali, but she rejected him when he tried to kiss her. However, Philippe liked the painting and promised to try and sell it. As their friendship continued to flourish, they enjoyed doing things together like getting a faster car, sharing joints, and even hiring escorts. When Philippe's birthday came around, he wasn't very excited about it. Every year, he had to pretend to be surprised by the party and meet with all of his relatives who only came to see him once a year to check that he was still alive. As the party was winding down, Driss went to search for Elisa, who was crying in her room after taking some of Yvonne's pills. She was upset because her boyfriend, Bastian, had broken up with her and called her a tart. She asked Driss to talk to Bastian, which he agreed to do for a price. Meanwhile, Philippe was showing Driss painting to his relative and managed to convince him to buy it for 11,000 euros. As the party ended, Philippe made Driss listen to some of the most important songs in classical music history, but Driss could only joke in response. Later, when putting Philippe to bed, Driss opened Eleanor's latest letter to him. She had sent a picture of herself and was telling him they should meet when she visited Paris the following week. When the day of the date arrived, Yvonne and Driss helped Philippe pick out the perfect outfit. Driss used his day off to visit Bastien and threatened him into apologizing to Elisa and bringing her croissants every day. He also asked him to fix his hair. Afterwards, Driss visited his mother at work but only watched her from afar. At the restaurant, Yvonne and Philippe were waiting for Eleanor, but she was very late. After waiting for an hour, Philippe gave up and called Driss to take him away. The two of them then left the restaurant without noticing Eleanor arriving at the same time. That same night, Philippe took Driss with him on his private plane and gave him the money he had made from selling the painting, which made Driss immeasurably happy. The next morning, they went paragliding in the countryside, and despite his initial reluctance, Driss ended up enjoying the experience, 